Hey guys, you're listening to WSOU. I am Nick and I'm here with Dan McCartney from Gideon. All right, so I wanted to talk about uh, you guys just released uh, your new album, Calloused, which is your guys' third album you've put out. And yep. how has it been so far? It's just the first week it's been out. It's been incredible, man. You know, like I've, uh, I'm an original member, so I, uh, you know, I can, I can recall the reactions to, you know, both the records that we do have out before this one. Right. Um, and none of it is, uh, even close to as strong as, uh, this one has been, you know, we, uh, we were able to land number 77 on top 200. Um, uh, we landed at I think five on hard metal, hard rock. Yeah, I think it was yeah, five. Couple, yeah, and then like uh, something on independent label. Um, but you know, it's it's been awesome. You know, our last record didn't even crack top two hundred. It wasn't even close. So that was cool. You know, that's kind of like a CD sell um, point of view. So that's that's obviously cool. But you know, what's more important is do the kids like the record and. Um, from what I've seen, you know, like I said, I've, I've been in the band for years now, and um, I think, you know, I've never had this good of a reaction to anything that we've ever put out. I've never seen it. So it's been really cool, man. Uh, you know, a lot of good reviews on the record, um, which is always good. So it's been awesome. It's been it's been a blast. The first week has been everything I could have asked for it to be. Why do you feel that uh, this release has put uh, such a big impact onto the band compared to your previous work? You know, I think it just, I think we're just a little older now. And I mean, okay. I'm only 22, uh, but, you know, we're all just a little older now. You know, I think um, going into this record was a little more organized. I think Milestone was kind of, you know, I love the record, but it was very, obviously very, um, we just kind of wrote, you know, and okay. we just kind of wrote a record. But this one was very organized. We kind of had a game plan for like, what direction we were going to take things. Right. Um, and it was cool, you know. Tyler Riley's and um, he, he wrote some guitar stuff on the record. Um, you know, he wasn't on our previous record. So, um, you know, that brought a lot of cool stuff, too. There's two guitar solos that he plays on the record mm -hmm. that we, you know, we've never had a guitar solo in our entire career on anything. Right. So that was, that was pretty cool. And um, some riffs on the record that, you know, we wouldn't have written before. So... I'm pumped, you know, we definitely, we definitely rolled the dice on a few things, but as far as I can see, um, it's been, it, everyone's stoked. So. Yeah, there, I, I really like, there's some really cool stuff on there that, like you said, that you guys hadn't usually done in your, your previous work that I thought it, it was, uh, it fit perfectly, but you're right, it was kind of like out there, a little different from what you guys were doing. For sure, absolutely. Yeah, yeah that, that's what we were hoping for. What, what in the, what exactly went along with writing it this time around compared to previous stuff that kind of put that touch on it that you you hadn't had on there previously? Um, obviously, having a new guitarist uh, was a little bit of it. Um, we uh, we changed a lot of um, we changed the um, I guess approach on a lot of the lyrics, uh, the lyrical content. Um, we you know had. Um, I mean, there wasn't there wasn't like a major difference between the last record, but you know, there were a few different like methods that we did that we wouldn't have done on the last record. Like there was one or two songs that we actually wrote the chorus to the song. Like our drummer wrote the chorus to the song before we wrote the song. Right. So we, you know, we we kind of tackled it as like, all right, well, we're going to do something interesting here. Write a chorus that is really really big sounding, and then. You know, if the chorus is that big sounding, then the rest of the song, you know, is going to be super easy to write at that point, you know, because um, the chorus is obviously m typically the most important part of the song. Right. So, you know, we, we tried a few different things. It was cool. And like I said, we just listened. Not that we just, like, listened to completely different things, but Milestone came out two years ago. And so um, I would like to think that there's a lot of maturity off the new record that you, that is obvious because you know you kind of start going back and listening to the band that you know made you start doing all this you know and yeah. um i've noticed it's a pretty constant cycle with uh with you know bands you know they like have you know they listen to whatever core and slipknot you know pod like all those kind of bands and then they kind of you know that turns into like this world of bands and then like you know three four records in they're listening to those old records again you know i think yeah. they definitely uh 
definitely made an impact for us. I have noticed that that the scene itself has kind of changed the last few years, just in total, just kind of like you just said. I think it's kind of cool how it does that. Yeah, it's cool, man. You know, bands are coming out with music that's like very smart songwriting, and it's getting big. And, you know, like, you know, Bring Me in the Horizon is a good example. I mean, you know, the record before um, this previous one, you know, I don't, I didn't, I, I never even listened to that, but I know that it was stylistically, it was like worlds different, you know. Right, and yeah. now the band comes out with a record that sounds like Linkin Park, Breaking Benjamin, yeah. and it's like the biggest record of our genre, and that's really cool because, you know, now like bands like us, like that's kind of, you know, we started kind of like writing more stuff similar to that as well, and uh, you know, so it kind of sets us up well, so. It's cool, yeah. I mean, the whole genre in general just kind of is shifting. You know, it does it every couple of years. You right. know, so it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. Did you hear the song they just put out the other day? Yeah, I loved it. A whole loved new, it. they went a whole new direction even just with that. Yep, it's I, crazy. I liked it a lot. You know, I think, uh, I think it's just smart songwriting. I'm not sure who writes all the stuff up there, but I'd love to uh, have five minutes with one of them. <laughs> it's very, uh, they're very intelligent, and you can, you can, you know, it's very apparent when you listen to it. Right. Now, I saw that uh, you, with this record, it said that you guys went through a lot of, like, personal darkness when you were trying to write the album. Where, what exactly went about with that? Well, you know, we just, uh, I think I think Gideon's always, like, put out pretty relatable music, you know? We've, this one, we kind of took an approach of, we wanted to, wanted to write multiple songs that, like, a lot of people could relate to. You know, that song Survive, in general, is just about, you know, surviving and pushing forward. And, I mean, it doesn't matter who you are, you can you can relate to that, you know? Right. Going through hard times, it's anyone can relate to that. Now, there's also a couple songs on the record that are very um, different and a little more selective towards a certain subject. Um, but, you know, we just kind of, uh, it's very... I, I love, you know, our idea was kind of like we wanted to write a record that people could listen to, you know, before they go to the gym and work out or before they go to school and take a test or whatever, you know, whatever it may be, may be that they're trying to apply themselves on and that it's obviously giving them a struggle. Um, we wanted to have a lot of songs that they could listen to. And so far, it's been awesome. I mean, people are tweeting, Facebooking us like, hey, like, you know, listen to this, like, help me get through this, like, that's, you know, that's, that's why we do it, you know what I mean? We don't, we don't make very much money off this, but, you know, having a kid walk up to me and be like, look, this song, like, changed my perspective on a lot of things, you know, that's, that's why we do it, you know? Right. It's been really cool. I'm, it, putting out a new record is really exciting, man. It's, uh, it's scary, but it's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Alt Press even had it as one of the most anticipated albums of the year, and they said that it had the potential to change the way that people looked at heavy music. What did that have, like, on your guys? Like, obviously, that must have been a, a big deal for you. Yeah, that was uh, that was cool. You know, there's this there's a guy over there. I actually met him last night, so it's really crazy that you brought that up. But there's a guy over there. His name's Tyler. That he writes. Um, he writes for Alt Press and. He really backs our band, and it's been really cool because we've made, like, you know, three or four of those cool, like, you know, I think we made, like, um, top ten songs to listen to and uh, went back in August. Yeah. Um, most anticipated, one of the most anticipated records of the year. Um, you know, now they'll, like, Facebook about us or tweet about us before, you know, it kind of wasn't that way, but um, that was cool. That was really cool, you know. I mean, obviously, probably the biggest magazine in, you know, heavy metal you know, yeah. I would assume. Um, so that was really cool. Like I was, I was, uh, I was really stuck on it. Obviously, you know, it gives you some butterflies because <laughs> <laughs> you know you're like, well, I hope it, hope everyone thinks it's that, you know. But uh, definitely, uh, I, I'm sure that there was definitely some people that listened to Gideon that probably wouldn't have uh, prior to that. So I was stoked. Now uh, you guys are out on the road right now, a fit for a king, right? Correct. How has that been touring with them, especially they had uh, the same release date as you guys did? Yeah, it's been incredible, man. Three bands came out with the record on the tour. Uh, Capsize came out with theirs. It's a really good record. They came out with theirs a little earlier on the tour. But, yeah, ours and Fitz came out the same day. We both charted. We both had great numbers. It was, it was, it was just a cool day, you know. I mean, 
yesterday was a is it was you know yesterday was when we got all of our charts back and our numbers and stuff and you know to see the progression of both of our bands we've been playing shows together for a while it was just really cool and uh i think for us to be like well, i mean we're just like really good friends and like i said we've been touring together for a while so yesterday was a really cool day for us to just kind of be like wow like this is this is an awesome progression you know yeah. So um, it's been cool. The tour has been awesome. Everyone on the tour is cool, and that's always good. So what is uh, planned after this tour? We have um, a spring tour in the works that we're working on confirming right now. Okay. I um, uh, can't say anything about it yet, but, I mean, if they'd confirm it, it would be, I, I assume, announced very soon. So, um, you know, we're. I mean, pretty much the idea is just to, you know, hit the road on this record and push this record hard. We all really believe in it and uh you know i think uh it's definitely panned out to be what we were hoping for it to be so far so that's the plan you know just get this record out to everyone that we can and uh just see where it takes us now i wanted to get your opinion on it because i i really feel that the last few years uh the the christian like metal and hardcore scene has really like hit like a peak and hit a really big mainstream and like warp tour i could think of a dozen uh like christian metal hardcore bands that were on it this year where previously there was maybe like three or four what do you think it is that is causing this this uh the big scene to rise up like that well you know i don't i don't know it's, it's very interesting that you say that because to be honest um it, it feels as though it, there's not as many but i think i think maybe warp like this past year put a lot on, but, you know, there's not that many anymore. There's not that many Christian metalcore bands. And, um, you know, it's just kind of one of those things, man, you know, a couple years ago, um, when we were first starting, we first started, uh, touring as Gideon with our, with Dan, our singer on cough in 2011, almost everyone we knew was a Christian band, you know? And, um, you know, it, it, you know, it is what it is. People change, but, you know, we still remain that, and I think the people that still remain that and the fans that still remain that will probably stay that the, their entire career, you know? So it's kind of cool because now it's not saying the other guys weren't real or anything, but if you've been a Christian man for years now, you're probably not going to change that decision. Right. So it's kind of cool that now, uh, you know, it they're there and they're not going away, so... I think Warps picked up on some of those and, uh, you know, put them out on the tour, and it was awesome. Um, I hope that we get to do that as well soon. That would be really cool. Yeah, absolutely. It'd be awesome. Speaking of Warp Tour, uh, Beartooth, Caleb Shomo, they played this year. They're also, uh, Caleb's featured on one of your guys' songs on the new album. How did that all get uh, going? Yeah, man. Um, Caleb's, Caleb's a cool guy. He came out to one of our shows, like, I think it was, like, last year we toured with Four Today. He came out to a show, and I, I can remember he was like, hey, guys, like, you know, we obviously knew who Attack Attack was, you right. know, obviously, but he's like, man, like, I just started this new band, Baratooth, like, you guys should uh, take us out on the road. And, you know, we were just supporting so much. We, we still haven't headlined. <laughs> so we've been supporting so much and doing, like, you know, larger tours, which is a good thing. But, you know, um, if we just never got around to it. And the next thing you know, it's like, this band is huge, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's just very interesting because I just can remember being like, like, you know, we, I love Gideon. Like he was very just super cool down to earth guy. And he was like, we should, we should tour together, you know? And, uh, at the time, I guess we weren't in the position to really take, take them or whatever. Um, but yeah, now the band's huge. They're killing it. They put out a sick record. That record disgusting is awesome. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, and, uh, so we just hit him up. I mean, we, we needed a guest vocalist. We actually had one that we were going to do, um, and he didn't pan out. So, you know, four days before, like, turning in mixes, I'm like, you know, we got to figure something out. Who are we friends with? And Caleb came up, and he owns his own studio. So we hit him up. You know, he goes and does it. He, he walks down to his basement, records, and, you know, he sent it over the next day. It was awesome. So, oh, so it was really um, last minute. Yeah, it, oh, it, wow. it, it was pretty, it was pretty last minute. Uh, we had, you know, not that he was like our last choice, or right, anything, but yeah. originally, originally, uh, we only had one other dude in mind and he wasn't able to do it. And because, and we thought that he was going to be able to, and then the day he couldn't, you know, we kind of scrambled, but 
um, yeah, it was cool, man. Like a lot of Baratooth fans have been like hitting us up, you know, didn't know who you were before until Caleb did this. So it was very cool. He, he seems like a really cool guy. I, I actually have never met him in person. I wasn't around when he came to that show. Right. Um, but, uh, I mean, I was in the band. I just wasn't with yeah, him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, you know, I hear he's an awesome guy and, you know, we're really appreciative of, um, of him doing it. Yeah, they're definitely, I have, I know, uh, someone up here has interviewed them numerous times. He seems like he's a really cool guy. Yeah, absolutely. He seems awesome. Yeah. So speaking of, since you guys are always like on the road recently, what is, uh, the one thing that you remember, uh, that was just like the, either the best or the worst situation you guys were in? Huh. Um, you know, I usually, I've gotten this question a couple of times and I usually say we got robbed one time and that is the worst feeling, man. It's just like, yeah, so de- it's like degrading, you know, like it seems to happen a uh, lot lately now too. Yeah. It's happened a lot. A lately. lot of bands and, have been getting robbed. Yeah. You know, we got robbed in Canada one time and you know, we were like at a movie theater, uh, and just came out and man, we were just robbed. It was pretty rough. That's probably like still the darkest point of our touring career, I would say. I mean, it was rough for sure. How'd you guys get back from that? Um, we just, uh, you know, we had, we weren't, we weren't near as uh, developed as we are now. And this okay. is a couple of years ago, um, but this is right after Dan joined the band. But um, we weren't as established or anything, so we kind of just, uh, you know, I remember I think we posted something on Facebook and we posted a PayPal and we're like. We don't. We never ask for things, but this is really rough. Like we wouldn't be asking if we didn't need it. Right. And we had like thousands of dollars donated, and we're able to like replace everything. It was so cool. It was awesome. so awesome. So, what are your tour essentials when you go out on the road? What do you have to have? Uh, you know, that's funny. Typically, you know, I have like a hygiene bag you know, <laughs> for like, you know, my toothbrush, my deodorant, all that kind of stuff. Um, I usually, to be honest with you, like pack insane amounts of socks and underwear <laughs> and then i just pack one or two pairs of jeans and tons of shirts and that's pretty much my you know because i'll I, you know i'll try to get tricky with it every once in a while a couple different pairs of shoes but reality is like <laughs> on tour i'm probably only going to want to wear one or two pairs of shoes because they get dirty right um you know so uh it's interesting that you ask that we get asked that every once in a while but you know, really it is, it's just like, don't pack too much, yeah. you know, because you're going to end up packing a bunch of stuff that you're <laughs> not going to wear, and you're going to be in the void when you get out. Right. So, that's pretty much my essentials. <laughs> Are you guys, like, the, the the whole thing with the touring bands, the baby wipes for showers? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> baby wipes, always. Baby wipes on on, uh, on demand. <laughs> <laughs> so, Pop, uh, was it Pop Goes Punk 6 comes out next month. If you got asked yeah. to be on 7, what song would you do? Oh, man. That's very interesting. <laughs> um, we would probably do a Justin Timberlake song. <laughs> Ooh, okay, okay. Because we love, we love, I, I, I think Mirrors by Justin Timberlake. That would, would be amazing. Yeah, that would definitely be a uh, uh, conversation in our band. I think everyone could agree with me on that. <laughs> But pulling that off would be pretty hard. But <laughs> that is one of the best records I've heard come out to me. I don't listen to an insane amount of pop, but that is a such a good record. I think it's called the 2020 Experience. Yeah, so good. He's like so, one yeah, of those I'd few that. guys that just transcends music, no matter what genre anyone can get into him. Yeah, I, you know, it's just like he's just Justin Timberlake is just good. I mean, yeah. <laughs> and no one can no one can deny that. Like he just puts out awesome music. So you know, heavy. You'll see, like, the toughest dudes ever, like, just some, like, heavy metal buff just listening to Justin Timberlake. <laughs> that good. That's so true. He's literally, no, he just, he's just good at everything. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so, so if you could put together your dream bill, what would it be for a tour? <laughs> My dream tour. All right, I got, I got it for you. All right. Uh, this is just off the top of my head, so no one get offended if you'll see. <laughs> um, <laughs> Slipknot, Hate Greed, Corn, Under Oath, Seven Dust, Gideon. That's wow, I would definitely that would be so sick. I would definitely go to that show. Yeah, that would be so sick. That would be an amazing <laughs> show. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> the, uh, so another speaking of covers, we'll go back for a second. Who would you want to cover one of your songs? 
Oh, uh, like if a band covered us? Yeah, like who, like just a band of the scene. Who do you, like? Who would you want to see pull off one of your songs? I think seeing issues do one of our songs would be cool. That would, that that would be cool. We we're friends with those guys, and everyone in that band's always been really cool to us. Um, so I, you know, I know the the guitarists really like us, and the DJ. I think Tyler Carter likes us stuff. Uh, I'd like to see that band do it, you know, because they could throw in some DJ stuff. I think that'd be cool. Yeah, that would be cool. I actually saw, yeah, Ty, I think, tweeted uh, at you guys the other day. I saw that. Yeah, yeah, he's a cool guy. He's a really cool guy. Oh, yeah. That would be cool to see you two guys go out on the road together because it's it's such a, I mean, you guys are still in the same spectrum, but yet you have such a, a totally different sound and everything. Yeah. Because oh, absolutely. everyone's no, they, they been like, doing that now. Yeah, like they have some new metal riffs in there and they, they get heavy every once in a while. It's pretty cool. So I think... We could totally tour together. I just, you know, it just has to be at the time. We get it. You know, it has to be at the time that it makes sense for them. And, it, you know, we completely understand. But, man, I would love, I would absolutely love to tour them. Yeah, because that's the, been the big thing recently is the, the mixed tour bills, like Yellow Card and Memphis Mayfire, like just yep. crossing genres. That would be so cool to see stuff like oh, that. Oh, absolutely. I, lo- I like the mixed bill thing. You know, it has to make sense. Right. But I like it. You know, Memphis, Yellow Card, that makes sense. Um, stuff like that is really cool, and I think, um, you know, the whole, like, you know, throwing one hardcore band, you know, I, I th- I've seen Expire, Backtrack, all those bands, like, doing, like, you know, Ghost Inside tours and stuff like that. That's really cool, you know? I think uh, when it makes sense and it, it, it works out, it's really it's really neat to mix bills like that. Yeah. Who would you want to mix a bill with? Um, personally, with Gideon? I mean, we, we kind of like to... You know, we did a, you know, I don't want to say the word quote-unquote scene or whatever, but you probably know what I mean by that. Like, yeah. one time we toured with Memphis Mayfire, The Word Alive, for today, Upon a Burning Body, and it was so cool. Yeah. You know, not not many of the kids knew who we were at the time, but all they knew is that we were, like, super heavy and, like, pretty bouncy and they could jump to us, and it just worked, man. It, it was, like, it was awesome. So, if we could probably go out and do a tour that's kind of mixed, like, we would probably try to go out and support a band like that again. That was very cool. That would be pretty cool. Absolutely. All right. I'll hit you with one more question. I actually thought about this uh, earlier today. I, it just came to my mind. I thought, might as well, you know, I'm going to start using this in interviews. What cool. What do you think is the uh, y- your preference for the best band named after a geographical location? Because there's so many, like Boston, Kansas, uh, Chicago. There's all those bands named after huh. geographical. What's your? I don't know why I thought um, about that earlier today. I'm let like, me think. No, 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 no. That's a, that's a good question. Um, I mean, I'm a fan of Boston. <laughs> I like, like, you know, our drummer has listened to Boston for a long time. Um, I like them personally. And then, obviously, you know, Slipknot has a record called Iowa. That's cool. Right. Um, yeah, I can't really think of a lot off the top of my head. That's a really cool question, though. And if people can, like, nail it off the, off the bat, that's, uh, <laughs> that's a very interesting question. But, yeah, I mean, you know, it seems as though uh, it's pretty popular to be doing, like, the you know, name after, like, some kind of geographical, if it's not, like, a state, like, some mountain or something, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty cool. All right, perfect. Well, thank you very much. Hey, man, I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. No problem.